afternoon, everybody. I toast to you and all you do. I hope you're having a fantastic morning. Today is the 8th. It is also the full moon, and we had an eclipse this morning. It was a very long eclipse. It lasted for a whole hour. Where I live, you can't see it. I did see the moon this morning. It was beautiful and just ever so over there um, on the horizon, just about to set. It was huge. I hope everybody who was up early got a chance to see it. Um, <clears throat> but it is a Taurus full moon, and this is also day eight of our introspective journey. So I was kind of going back and forth on whether to make one or two videos, but the energy goes together in the sense of this introspective journey and with this lunar eclipse that I feel like you can't separate the two. So we'll start off with the question because it's pretty straightforward. Um, the question is, I almost forgot just in that brief moment, how many people do you consider true friends? So if we talk about what a true friend is, this is someone you can count on, this is someone that you trust, this is someone that you have a shared integrity with. True friendships are not one-sided. This is, goes both ways. So this is someone you can call on when you need, and they can call on you, and you have that trust between each other. So when I count the number of true friends that I have, I have very few, and a couple of them are siblings. So we always joke with each other. We're like, that doesn't really count because you're stuck with me forever. But that's a good thing. I have a very good connection. Um, but <laughs> through that... Uh, I used to question that. I used to like be like, oh, I don't have very many friends who I like really consider friends. I mean, if I threw a party and I invited people, I'm sure more than I think would show up. But I don't ever throw those kind of parties. So I don't have that surrounding. Uh, I'm just not into that. Plus I have kids. I mean, they're getting older now. So I'm like, okay, when they get older, we can start like doing stuff again. <laughs> people are willing to babysit them. <laughs> Well, my sister who lives closer is really what it comes down to. Um, but, you know, how many of these people, and it, they're just not, you know, people that I would truly trust. And I was like, well, I, I have really high standards. And I'm a very honest person, so it can be hard to be my friend. Uh, I am quick to say, hey, what's wrong? Even in my marriage, we have a rule. I'm only allowed to ask one time per day. And then I just have to let it go because I cannot just keep asking over and over and over again. Um, and that's okay. That's like a boundary that we've set up because I can be intrusive in that way. And I recognize that, and that you know, but when you're my friends, at times I've had friends be like, you have to back off. And I'm okay being told that. I recognize that that's my boundary. <clears throat> but that's what makes us good friends is that I recognize mine and they recognize theirs and we work together and we communicate. You know, I was just talking to someone a couple weeks ago. They were like, oh, I think that my business partner and friend and I aren't going to be friends anymore because I came at them with these concerns that I was having about our friendship and my boundaries and they didn't take it very well. Um, I think that they made up, but it was just this moment of like rockiness because it's hard to hear those things. It's hard to be a part of that conversation. But that's what makes you good friends. So when you think about who you can have those conversations with and how many of those people are in your life um, and how much you honor those relationships. Like this is a good time to call up those people and be like, hey, thanks for being a good friend and thanks for being my friend for all these years and sticking with me through tough and times and good times and all of that stuff. And, you know, let's make plans for the future. Because your good friends aren't always people that you see. I have a very dear friend. I love her so much. Um, last weekend, two weekends ago, whatever, was the first time that I've seen her in almost two years. Like, dang it, I forgot her Christmas presents. I got a pile of presents for her because I just don't ever see her. We talk occasionally. You know, we go through. We're just, it's, but we're still very good friends. Um, when push comes to shove and it comes down to it, you call each other. I will be there no matter what. And that's just what it is. We need an honest opinion. She's definitely the person that I call. Like, <laughs> she'd just be like, Tara, really? She's always giving me advice on things I don't want advice on because she knows that I need it. And I accept that. I'm like, okay, thank you. This is a good conversation to have. And I hear what you're saying. And I'm going to take it in. And I just can't do it right this second. It's going to take me a day or two to, like, 
okay, what she was saying was right. I need to do these things. But that's a good friend. So as you think about how many good friends you have, how many of these people, how many people in your life are your good friends? And, you know, are there relationships you need to work on? Is there someone you need to say thank you to, reach out to, whatever it may be? And how much do you honor these friendships? Are you a good friend to these people? Just kind of think about your relationships with your friends and true friends, good friends. That is the introspective question. Now we're going to get into this lunar eclipse, full moon, which as you can probably tell has my energy a little jittery. I am a Scorpio and this Taurus opposing moon. Play, Taurus plays a lot in my chart and in my life. Uh, so this is just like a, just the veil is really thin um, between realms and whatnot. So get a lot of deja vu. I get a lot of like, this morning I was braiding my daughter's hair and it was, I can't even begin to explain the sensation. She even looked at me a little weird and I was like, I'm having some kind of like memories going on here. Um, she had on these really pretty earrings and like dangly with moons and she just, anyway. <clears throat> so has my energy kind of up in a flow, but the nice thing about Taurus and this full moon is that it can kind of help ground you and help you settle into those comforts and what's in reality. So there is a lot going on right now in the natal chart and in astrology with this full moon and the eclipse. Like I said earlier, it was a really long eclipse. It lasted a whole hour. If you were in India, parts of Europe, even I think all the way down to Australia, some parts of Australia got to see some of it. Um, it would last, it lasts a long time. Uh, and even if you couldn't see it, this energy is still present. Uh, and you have to, you don't have to see it in order for it to affect you. It's been so much energy in this one of those days. Anyway, so. The moon is at 16 degrees Taurus, and the sun is at 16 degrees Scorpio, so this is an exact, that's one of the reasons we get this full Scorpio, or this eclipse. The full moon is also conjunct with the north node, so in an eclipse, this is a time of endings, this is a time of letting go, uh, going into the darkness, and then coming out new, a rebirth, kind of rejuvenation, those things. And then with the North Node, it's very much emphasizing this new beginnings. So as we go through the rest of this very fixed chart, uh, just keep that in mind. Uh, the North Node is there as like a pleasant, happy reminder saying, hey, even though there's a lot of, even though there's a lot of chaotic energy, it is coming out to this new beginning. It is going to be this fresh start and have this opportunity and don't get caught up on all of this chaos and be stuck in this cycle again. This is a big opportunity to see past all of this and to recognize all of this, learn these lessons. One of the reasons I said this is part of this introspective journey. This is emphasizing this time of introspection and going into the darkness so that you can come out new, so that you can come out aware, you can come out in a higher state of consciousness, being you know, closer to your ideal self. But first we have to go through this darkness. So that conjunct with the North Node is just a reminder that yes, there may be chaos, but don't focus on that. Focus on this light at the end of the tunnel. So, as I said, we have, oh, wait, you know, let's go over this easier stuff first. So, this is the beaver moon. This is the seasonal time. Um, you would hear the beavers out. They're fixing up their ponds. It makes it easier to hunt, and their pel pelts are very important to the Native Americans of the United States, and that's where this beaver moon name comes from. So, they would do a lot of hunting. You would hear the beavers out at night. 
I don't know if you've ever heard of beaver slap its tail on the water, but it is crazy sounding. I mean, it's, I thought my son fell in the lake, honestly, and was like drowning, like trying to get <laughs> go over my head and was like, shh, watch. And it was this beaver and he was slapping his tail on the water. He's an outdoor fisherman. Um, but, so that is where this beaver moon comes in. And it reminds us to think about what we need in order to su su survive, in order to make it through the colder times of the year. So take stock of all that we have and focus on what uh, focus on what you have so that you can be prepared for the future. This is not about making plans and going out and like to achieve new wealth it's more about like okay this is what i have here's where we're at take stock do your thing we've got a lot of financial energy going on right now in the astrological chart so think about where your finances are and everything and just kind of take a good stock and you have a good reference point to be able to be prepared for the future um, and so this is also a time to adjust your sleeping habits. We just had daylight savings time. We have, uh, so when we have daylight savings time, it is our tendency to then sleep in that extra time and not naturally get up when we are used to getting up. My kids are getting up and going to the bathroom really early in the morning, but then they're all going back to sleep and it's really hard to wake them up. And in reality, we should just all get stay getting up at that same time and adjusting to this new schedule because it's going to be dark way early. So if you have that little bit of more time in the morning to just relax and hang out, this, I'm having this great idea right here. I'm going to maybe start doing that again. Definitely, I've been not going back to sleep. Um, but that's, you know, adjusting your sleeping habits. You also want to adjust what you're eating. Uh, this is a great time to start eating all of those root vegetables. There's a reason that we kind of crave those at this time of the year because they're really good for your digestion. They're really good for your health. They're healthy, star bleh, healthy starches that are those complex starches that are hard for your body to digest, which is a good thing because they take longer. You get more nutrients out of them. They just help you have a healthier existence before we go into winter. <clears throat> so, uh, now on to the rest of the astrological things that are not just uh, seasonal. So as I said, Taurus is at 16 degrees. Uh, the moon is at 16 degrees, Taurus. And it is conjunct with the north node. And then I mentioned this fixed thing. We have six planets in fixed signs. Um, and Several of them are in retrograde. I think it's, uh, I know for sure that Mars is in retrograde, which is this really slow moving energy right now. It can be kind of frustrating. You might see this around you a lot. People are frustrated. They are just in this like, and there's a lot of that in all of this fixed sign. So we have Mercury, Sun, and Venus conjunct in Scorpio, which is a fixed sign. It is a lot about, you know, your internal desires, deep truths, passions. And so if what you're doing every day is conflicting with your true passions, you're really going to see this frustration, like earthquake about to happen. Um, this is square to Saturn in Aquarius, which again is another fixed sign. It's also another water sign. Um, <clears throat> And Saturn is just this reminder that you have to have rules, you have to have structure, you have to have societal integrity. I don't necessarily see it as like our modern social laws, because those are very much based on Christianity. But the Saturn is a reminder that no matter what your social rules are, you need to have those rules. You can't just have anarchy. You know, I love the concept of every person for themselves, but at the same time, there's always going to be some bad person who's going to come out, take over stuff that's not theirs. That is just the reality of life. No one, at no point in the history of human 
existence, has there been a purely utopic, there's enough resources for everybody, why can't we all just get along kind of time? Not yet, at least. If we could all be just better people, that could happen. <laughs> so, we have then Saturn square to the North Node, Mars, or no, North Node, the Moon, and Uranus, all conjunct, which those are opposing Mercury, Sun, and Venus. So that's a lot of square and opposing, which in general brings up some tension. It is a reminder of the things that we need to work on. It is, in this case, has a lot to do with like secrets coming up, uh, questioning this top-down structure because we still have Pluto and Capricorn, which is continuing to push people on the everyday level to say, hey, what is my government really doing? What is my boss really doing? What is my household really doing? Where is our structure? What is the structure based on? And what reality is that bringing us to? Uh, so all of these squares and fixed energy is bringing this really tight energy. I feel like a, it's like a rubber band that's just been pulled tight into these directions and is you see a lot of people feeling like they're about to pop. Uh, you'll see, you'll probably see some earthquakes. We'll probably see some volcano eruptions, uh, some disruptive things in our systems. Um, Uranus really wants to push everybody forward in this whole thing, which is part of this. And being square to Saturn, it's like Saturn is like the leash. Like, hey, come back here, come back here, come back here. But Uranus will win out in this battle. Uranus will push everything forward and it will open up these brand new perspectives. So be, as I said, don't get caught up in these tensions that this is creating. Allow this energy to expand and move us forward and move you forward. If we all individually move forward as a collective, we will also move forward. Like I said, this is going to bring some tension. You're not only going to see the earthquakes and natural disasters kind of situations, you're also going to see those in your personal life. You're going to see those in your financial life. You're likely to see those in our local governments and our big governments. Uh, you see there's a lot of tension building up right now worldwide, um, and it's fearful. There's a lot of tension building up in our financial systems. It is also the midterms today, so if you didn't vote, go vote. Drop off your ballots. Do what you need to do to make those better choices. And don't vote based on someone's name. Really vote if you find someone who has the most in common with your political views, with your societal goals. Uh, you know, I'm registered one way, but I don't always vote that way get out and make those changes. If we all educatedly was, mm, see, can't even say it right. If we all voted knowing what we were actually voting for, make sure you read the whole thing. I love these ballots. They're like, we're going to do this great thing. And then you read the whole thing on the long ballot and you're like, wait, they're also going to do what with this? Uh, just pay attention to that. No. And these secrets are going to come up and see it, know it. You're probably going to see some disruptive things in this election eclipse is going to bring things to the light, hopefully. Um, Taurus is in the financial spectrum of astro astrology. It has very much to do with your physical wealth, your home, your place of you know, work, this things that you do every day, what you are grounded in. Scorpio is very much like big finance. So we have this opposing energy and the eclipse is probably going to like highlight issues. It's going to show you where maybe you're forgetting to, that, hey, I paid for all these subscriptions. What am I actually paying for? Uh, <laughs> utilize those subscriptions or cancel them. But <laughs> we're going to see some of that tension. Uh, also, they both have to do with relationships. You have Venus 
which it is conjunct with the sun. And so that's going to also bring up your relationship and finances, but uh, you might see some jealousy, some tension, some discomfort, some like, hey, I need to talk about something. And especially because it's conjunct with Mercury. So you're going to, you know, talk about it. Just open that line of communication. Don't get caught up in the chaos of this moment of feelings. Really just allow those, allow the words to come out. And allow the other person to finish before you assume everything or want to interject or want to say something. Because chances are, even if they said something at the beginning that was like the ball rolling, by the time they get to the end, they're going to be like, okay, but here's how I really feel. And I'm sorry I started that way, but this is, I just didn't know how to say it. Because there is this tension and you don't know how to open that line of communication. So just allow it to flow out. Be in touch with all of this fluid energy and you know through Scorpio and Aquarius and where all of these plant planets are in these signs of water allow that energy to flow um, and have those conversations so that you can build stronger relationships you can build a fi stronger financial system you can vote better you can build a better community you can build this better foundation so that as we enter into this new existence, this grand opening, this new, uh, one of the astrologers that I watch, she is so much working on this rebirth of energy that she is focused on. She's not even taking clients, she's not doing anything else. She just makes her videos and focuses on her energy, um, on helping people through this shift astrological energy this grand rebirth <clears throat> and um, the unfortunate part of any rebirth is that there has to be a destruction you know I talked about reincarnation yesterday it has to be a death in order for the new life to begin so this is that time of death of destruction of let's <laughs> just burn everything down so that we can start something new I don't mean literally I just in my brain figuratively that's what I see is just this there is so much rubble being created through all of the honesty that's coming up between racism and sexism and abuse and uh, greed and all lust and oh there's so many bad things and we're going through all of the seven deadly sins even though I am not a Christian those things are still relevant they are still important if you look at them and all of them are being questioned right now in our society as a whole and we have people bringing them into the news we are questioning them in our households we are really like what what structure are we continuing forward with and this eclipse really pushed everybody into the darkness now it's kind of scary to say and you're going to see a lot of fear mongering and people are like this is a time of doom and darkness and and everybody's going to see drama and if you get caught up in the tension it is going to cause drama if your partner comes to you or your friend comes to you and says hey I have this problem I feel like you hurt my feelings because you did this thing and maybe they say something hurtful as they start that conversation if all you focus on is that hurtful thing like, ah, then that is gonna because you have your own tension instead let them voice their whole opinion let them talk until they're like okay I have nothing left to say and then you can say okay this is how I have been feeling. And you come at them with your unload of feelings because everyone is going to have this need, this tension. Uranus is like erupting energy. Like, let's move forward. Let's move forward. Let's move forward. Like, I like that's. And then we have all of these things kind of like pulling into me. Like, Whoa, slow down, Uranus. Slow down. We're not just going to jump forward. Um, but when that tension has a chance to release, it's going to. So just kind of let it all come out like diarrhea of the mouth and then everybody can have their turn. And when you get to the end of the conversation, you can be like, okay, I really hear what you're saying. We're both having these issues. So we're clearly miscommunicating. I love you. Let's do a better job talking in this way. What, what are better words that we could use? Let's bring this up before it becomes a big problem. I see it, you know, most people are like, oh, it's just a small thing. It doesn't bother me. But then that small thing keeps happening and keeps happening. And then it does start to bother you. If the first time it happened, you said something, then it wouldn't be an issue. My 
the sensei at my kid's dojo does a great job with this when he talks about bullying. He says, if someone comes over and calls you a nickname that you don't like, they're like, hey, shorty, and you don't like being called shorty, but you don't say anything. You just let it slide. Oh, and then the next day they do it, and the next day they do it, and after they've done this for months, it has really gotten to you. It really hurts your feelings, and you explode, and you're like, stop calling me shorty. They didn't know. And you didn't say anything. So they're not being a bully because they didn't know what they were doing. I mean, if they're calling you a bad name, he always says that's different, but... You know, if they're just like, this is the funny nickname that they've come up, they're being playful, and maybe their intentions really were playful, you don't know that because you didn't say anything in the first place. But if the first time it happened, you were like, mm, yeah, no, that's not going to work for me. Let's just let's stick with my name. And they were like, okay. Then you can just move forward. It's not a big deal. I think this goes on for grownups, on everyday life, every little thing, you know, my husband's like, I, it drives me crazy that you leave clutter everywhere. And he, he's been married 13 years, so it's a, <laughs> it's a thing. But I do my best to make sure that the kids and I aren't just leaving piles of stuff everywhere in the house. Because that brings him to the stop. Like it just affects his anxiety. And I get that. Like, that's a trigger for him and his anxiety. And I respect that boundary. So I try to do the best I can. And when I see piles start to accumulate, I'm like, oh, we better clean this up. Get it all put away. But that's about communication. And having that open communication. So as those lines of tension open up and somebody comes at you, you just need to let it happen. As you're walking through this darkness and you start to see these shadows of truth, don't dismiss them. Don't say, oh, that can't happen. Or that's not real. Or no way. Really listen to that truth that you're being shown through these little spurts in the darkness. Um, the eclipse is not just today. This is an energy that ripples out like a big drop in a bucket. Somebody dropped a big 10-pound lead in the bucket, and it made a big ripple, and it's got to disperse all the way. It's not even a bucket in the ocean. It's got to disperse out. It takes time to get all the way out to the end, and it continues to create those ripples, and then you see the repeating rip. That's the same way you got to kind of think about this energy. It dropped in the bucket, and now we have this eclipse energy going forth. And so you're going to see these truths come out. You're going to see darkness. You're going to see things that you don't necessarily want to see, truths that you don't want to see, even about yourself. Um, again, another reason why it was part of this introspective journey is because as we walk through this eclipse time that is very much in this dark time of our year, it like it heightens all of that dark energy. Again, this is not a bad place. Instead of thinking of this darkness like the bat cave, oh, it's scary, and the bats are going to fly at me. No, this is the womb of the mother goddess. It is a beautiful, warm, amazing place with like glowing rocks or whatever makes you happy in this place. <laughs> in my mental temple, it is very much a dark place with this warm, like hot tub pool, and it's lit up with those little worms that glow in the dark, and there's like glowy things in the water because it's a cave that never sees the light. It is always dark here. The dark, the light comes from within, not externally. And I think that is one of the lessons that's hard for people to take away, especially in this Christian society. We are taught that you only have darkness inside you and you are a sinner from the moment that you are born and you have to do everything that you can to make these right choices and to evade the devil. In reality, the darkness is in you and the light comes from within that. And that is the light that is coming out right now after this eclipse. That is the light that we see on the winter solstice when we step into the new light of the new year. And the darkness that we are in is the womb of that mother goddess. She is in her final stages of pregnancy and she has now encompassed, in, I can't even say the word, she has completely taken in the whole of the earth and everything that is on it into her womb. And she says, now we are in this state of darkness and we are going to heal and we are going to be honest with ourselves. We are going to, you know, be loving and truthful and honor ourselves by coming through this darkness healed, wiser, 
better prepared for the future and letting go of the chaos that we don't need. Like, let it go. It's okay. So, as this energy flows through you with this full moon and, and as we travel through this introspective journey, keep that in mind. This darkness is not a time of the bad games. This is not a scary place. This is not like a desert wasteland and there are no stars and it's dark and cold and dreary. Uh, it is not any of those. It's not a dark alley where the devil is in the corner. It is not any of those things. This is a beautiful, warm place, like a nice, warm, hot tub, maybe under the starry sky, just, you know, beautiful and warm and welcoming and healing. So, um, I think that's everything. Uh, as we, wait, let me double check just to make sure there's nothing very important. Yeah, no, that's, you know, just, again, don't get caught up in the tension. Release that. Let it happen. Let it go. Let it out in a healthy, happy, like, know that this is a time to change. And we can let go of this old chaos, kind of make a move forward, and we can enter into this new light, happy and healthy and healed, wiser and stronger and all of those things. Uh, so you have any questions always let me know questions comments stories anything just uh, in the comments below don't forget to like and subscribe and uh, I hope that your introspective journey is going well if you have general questions about the introspective journey you can comment that on any of the videos um, and as I've said before you don't have to watch all of the videos you don't have to feel like oh, I missed two videos so I'm not gonna watch any more doesn't have to be like that. If a video calls to you and you're like, oh, this is something I need to answer, or you know, you happen to have a day of watching YouTube and this is what you watched, that's awesome. Uh, and I just encourage you to do it as often as you can through this dark time so that you can, again, come out the other side with this winter solstice and this new year, you know, ready for this grand awakening, this universal shift that we're having your question curious about that universal universal it's cold out here my fingers are cold my face is getting cold <laughs> if you are curious about this universal shift that's happening pam gregory she is all about it she's got lots of videos on it you can go check her out she's like one of the experts experts i go to when i'm checking out astrology things and like doing research on the natal chart and stuff like that um so she is a great resource I hope everybody has a fantastic day. Stay warm if it's cold where you are and enjoy your beaver moon.